In the NIC collection, you'll see the NIC pre-sharpener and the NIC sharpener output. And these are part of your creative workflow. So before we can understand this, let's go all the way back to the point where you take a photo. As soon as you take a photo, your camera adds pre-sharpening to your image. It's gonna sharpen up the different levels and it's gonna sharpen up the edges. It's gonna do that for you in the best way it knows how. Unfortunately, a lot of cameras don't do a fantastic job of that. And if you're shooting RAW, as soon as you open a RAW file in Adobe Camera RAW or any RAW photo editing software, that software is also going to apply pre-sharpening. In fact, you might not even know it's happening, but it is. So the recommendation is to use better software, that's Nick pre-sharpener, and turn all of that other sharpening off. You can go into your camera's menu and turn off sharpening, and you can go into any Adobe Camera Raw or any raw processing image processor and turn off sharpening, and we'll use this instead. If you didn't have any pre-sharpening in your images, you might make editing choices that would overcompensate for that, adding too much clarity or adding too many filters, and you won't get the best results. So we want to pre-sharpen our images, but we want to do it in an intelligent way, and that's where Nick pre-sharpener comes in. It uses advanced algorithms to get us to the perfect place without overdoing it. Okay, let's just take a look at this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zip over to our workshop files and we're gonna hop into Nick pre-sharpener. So I'll get in there. And then we have this boats.tiff file. So I'm gonna just bring that into Photoshop. I have turned off all sharpening. So all the sharpening in this image was turned off. None has been applied from the camera or anywhere else. This is a, an unsharpened image, no pre-sharpening. What I wanna show you is this image and how it's composed. We have a few different areas here. We have these boats that look pretty cool, but then we also have all of these fine details in these branches and twigs and things back here. Now this was shot with a Leica camera and Leica lens, and they are renowned for resolving tiny details. And this image has all of those details, but we need to pre-sharpen to see those details. But I don't want to over sharpen the boat or the lake or these other boats here in the back. I just want to bring out the details in the background. And so Nick Pre-Sharpener does a great job because I can select different areas to sharpen and make sure they're sharper than others. Let me show you how that works. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our Nick Collection palette. And we're going to go here to Nick 6 Pre-Sharpener and open the Pre-Sharpener. So by default, when this comes in, we have raw pre-sharpening. So adaptive sharpening is at 50% by default and things are gonna look pretty good. I'm gonna go into 100% so you can see this. Then I'll click compare before and after. It's very, very subtle. You might not be able to see it on the video. So I'm gonna go way overboard, all the way up to 100% and do before and after. You can start seeing these branches and these bushes popping out. And so this prepares our image for editing. But what we want to do is we want to do this in an intelligent way. So I'm going to take my adaptive sharpening back down to the default level, which is 50%. I'll hit this little arrow with a little circle there. And so what we can do here is by default, this pre-sharpening is going to be pretty good. I can also balance how these uh, things are sharpened. So if I want the edges to be more pronounced, I can say, let's go more toward the edges. If I want big areas like this lake to be balanced and more preserved, I can go more toward the areas, or I'll just keep that in the middle at the default level and it's going to do a great job. But the choice is yours. This is something you can't do in a camera. The other thing we want to do is we want to look and see if this is a normal image, what this is, or if it's a high ISO image. The reason we want to say if this is a high ISO image is because high ISO images have noise in them. By selecting high ISO, we're telling Nick Pre-Sharpener not to sharpen the noise. We don't want to sharpen any of that. We want to leave it alone. Okay, there's some other things we can do here. At the top of the screen, you'll see we have the compare mode and the zoom, just like everything else. But we also have this mode view. Sharpened image, effect overlay, everything looks red and effect mask, everything looks white right now because the whole image has been sharpened. We wanna selectively sharpen just different areas 
And those two modes help us see those different areas. So let's start doing that right now. So what I want to do is I want to sharpen the area with all the branches differently than the area with the boat. And so what I can do here is I have my selective points here. So I can either add a control point to add sharpening to different areas, or since the entire image has been sharpened already, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a neutral control point. That's saying don't sharpen in this area. So I've sharpened the whole thing. Now I'm going to start subtracting areas that I don't want to be sharpened, which is specifically these boats. So I'm going to click on this. I'll go over here. I'm going to click on, I'll start with this boat right here on this edge. When I click on that, I can click on this mask to sort of see what I'm getting. I can move that around. This is pretty good without even having to change luminance or chrominance. I can say, yeah, this boat is what I want. In fact, two of these boats, this stuff. Remember, anything that's white is going to be affected. Anything that's black is not being affected. So the edges of this boat is what I want to be affected. That looks pretty good. I'm going to turn this mask off really quickly. Let's take a look at this mode. So effect mask, you can see that anything that's black is being removed from the sharpening. So the edges of this boat, not going to be sharpened, which is pretty good. So I'm going to control point, click on that. I'm going to name this boats small. Then I'm going to do another neutral control point. Then I'm going to get on this boat right here and make this much larger. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So again, anything that's black is being subtracted. So I don't want this boat. I'm going to hit my option or alt key and zip over here. I'm copying this and I'm going to click on this edge here. So I'm saying I don't want the edges of this boat or this boat or this lake. I don't want any of that stuff to be sharpened. And that's what this mode is telling me. This effect mask is showing me what is being removed from the sharpening. Let's look at the overall image. I can compare before and after. It's a good idea to do this at 100% to see exactly what's happening. Again, I highly recommend you do this on your computer at home so you can see this. It's difficult to see in a video. The other thing we can do is we can look at this effect overlay. And now on the effect overlay, you're seeing the red area is showing what's being sharpened and the translucent area, what's showing through is what's not being sharpened. So we can see these boats are starting to come through that red. In other words, they're not being sharpened. I'm only sharpening the areas that are in the background, in the foliage. It's really, really powerful. That's what those two modes do. Okay, I could save this and start editing, but there's one other way that I can intelligently sharpen this image, and that's with color channels. Let me show you that right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete my different control points. We don't need those anymore. So let's get rid of those. Okay, so the other method we have here, we have selective adjustments, so we selectively made adjustments. We also have color ranges. So we have colors to choose from, and then we're just sharpening those colors. So I know I have a lot of green in this image. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to this red. I can change that by clicking on the color picker. Then I'm going to go and click on this leaf. I'm going to grab the green there and I'm going to take this color orange. We don't need that. I'm just going to delete it. I'll take another color and I'll do a brighter green, maybe even a brighter one than that. Something about right here. Yep. That looks great. So what I'm doing is, and I can even refine this as many times as I want until it gets exactly what I want. So now what I'm doing, we can look at this effect mask. We can look at the overall effect. So this is a better choice. We can start seeing that this is getting these branches, this, uh, the foreground area is starting to leave alone these boats and these other areas. It's really powerful to just go in and say, you know what, let's sharpen up this area based on this color. So the choice is yours. You can sharpen the entire image. You can selectively choose areas of an image, or you can sharpen by color range. It's a very, very powerful tool. In my normal workflow, I would take these boats and then I would do all of my edits and then I would sharpen those for output. 
Output sharpening is different than pre-sharpening. Output sharpening depends on your destination. Sharpening for a small screen is different than sharpening for a poster or sharpening for a billboard. They need different amounts and types of sharpening. So the workflow is pre-sharpen, edit, and then sharpen just before output. So in this demo, I think I have a better illustration of how to do output sharpening. And so instead of working on the boats, we're gonna switch things up and we're gonna revisit an image that we've already worked on. And so we did this in our silver effects lesson, hop into the workshop image and you'll see in our Nick Sharpener output folder, Sophia black and white. So bring that into Photoshop. This is an image that is gonna be used for a specific reason. And that reason is that this image, when we look at it, if you recall in that lesson, we really cranked up all of the contrast and the clarity, all of that stuff to make this a really punchy image. And so when we're output sharpening something like this, we have to be careful not to overdo it. That's true of any case, but this one in particular. So let's hop over into Nick Sharpener output so we can walk through sort of this workflow. Now that we're here in Nick Sharpener output, let's take a look at the interface. On the left-hand side, we have custom presets. You'll notice that it's empty. The reason that it's empty is that these presets really need to be made by you based on your image, the image size, and where you're gonna be outputting your images. Now on the right, you'll see output sharpening. We have a bunch of different options. And so those are essentially the presets that we'll normally use. So we've got settings for inkjet printers and continuous tones and halftone devices, hybrid devices, all of those things are there. And we have even more uh, details for each of those. So you can sort of think of these output sharpening options as presets. But if you're always outputting to an inkjet printer that's a very specific size that you use over and over again with the same settings, you can take that, save it as your own preset. That'll show up here on the left-hand side so you don't have to do any of these settings on the right-hand side. But generally speaking, you're gonna be sharpening your images specifically one at a time. So let's hop in here and take a look at the top of our interface. We have our compare and zoom menu that's just totally normal like it is for all the other apps. And then we have this mode button right here. We can see our sharpened image, sharpening soft proof to see sort of what that would look like when it's going to its final destination. And then we have our effect overlay and effect mask, which we'll get to here in a bit. Okay, so let's talk about what's happening on the right hand side. On the right hand side, we have the method of sharpening and really that's by destination. Where is this going? Is it going to your computer display? Is it going to a certain kind of printer? And if so, what kind of resolution are we using? Because that will all determine how much sharpening is applied. So on the right hand side, let's pretend that we're going to go to an inkjet printer. So it says, how far away are people going to be? So you can choose the distance. Are they gonna be looking at it close? Or are they gonna be looking at it from far away? So we'll say, oh, they're probably gonna be, I don't know, up to three meters. What kind of paper is going to be used? Matte paper uses different sharpening than glossy paper. So let's use glossy paper. And then what's the resolution of this print? So if it's a very large print, it's a small print. So let's say this is gonna be a really large print. There we go. Using these settings, we already have an intelligent sharpening happening on our image. So if I zoom in, this looks really, really sharp. So if I look before, after, before, and after. So on the screen, it looks way too much. But remember, we're saying we're printing this gigantic to put on a wall for people to look at from a distance. So they're not gonna see it the way we're seeing it right now. So what we're doing is we're sharpening this for a specific scenario, a specific viewing experience, and a specific printer, and a specific size. It's much more intelligent than just saying sharpen. We're making sure that we set everything exactly the way we want. We can also come in here and override things. So creative sharpening, we're saying, hey, how much strength should we have? We can take that down, we can take that up. We can do whatever we want based on our experience with our printers and our displays and things like that. We can change structure and contrast and focus. All of these things are at our disposal. So that's how you sharpen for a specific output. If you want to sharpen for a halftone device, 
Again, you just put in half tone, what the distance is, etc., and it works perfectly. However, when you have an image like this one, I want to sharpen this for display. I know that's where I'm going. I also know that because we did all of our editing and we cranked everything up to 10 to make sure it was already sharp and well-defined, we don't need as much sharpening as we normally would um, on a whole broad level. So we can selectively sharpen. So we get the sharpness where we need it and nowhere else. So let's take a look at how to do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose display. I want to sharpen this for display, but I think it's too sharp on her face, on her lips. It's too much sharpening. So what I'm going to do here, instead of sharpening the entire image, I just want to sharpen her eyes to make sure they're really punchy. I think the eyes sell this photo. So I'm going to go into 100% and I'm going to get to where her eyes are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do selective sharpening. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click on her eye with my control point. I'm going to bring this in so it's much smaller. And now what I can do is I can go up here to my mode and I can say, let's see the effect mask. So I am going to see sharpening just in the areas that are white. So I can say the luminance and chrominance. The other thing is the creative sharpening up here and the adaptive sharpening, I'm going to take those down so that no sharpening is being applied to any of the image. I only want sharpening to be applied where my control point is. So as I move this around, I can see that I am affecting just the eye, just the eye. I can change the luminance and the chrominance to get in exactly where I want it to be. That looks pretty good, just like that. I'll do another one by hitting Alt or Option on my keyboard and copying that over. So we can see exactly where that sharpening is happening. I can do an effect overlay. So the red is going to show me where the sharpening is happening. So we can clearly see where sharpening is happening in this image and where sharpening isn't happening. I'll go back here to the sharpened image. And though we can say before, after, we can see that only the eyes are popping. The rest of the image is staying the same. If I think the rest of the image needs a little more help, then I can say, let's increase the output sharpening a little bit. And so I've controlled two different areas, the overall image with the output sharpening and the eyes with the selective sharpening. And I can do that for any place I want. If her lips need a little bit more or less, I can add control points. And so we can selectively go in and choose exactly where and how to sharpen to get the maximum results for any kind of photo that we have. And that's how sharpening works. You pre-sharpen, edit, and then sharpen for output and based on where you're going. Okay, now that we know all about that, let's go on to our next app.